I think the care level here was outstanding. I felt like I was really cared for. I was a person who had cancer, but things were going to be all right. It was, it was devastating. But it, to me, it wasn't totally the end of the world because I had faith in the facility and my doctors. They make you so comfortable here. And it is, it's wonderful. I owe these people so much. When I came here, I was not sure what to expect. But all the people here just put me at ease. As you place yourself into their hands, you just feel comfortable. Just like anyone else, you know, you don't know what, what to expect. And Stephen Fodor would face plenty of uncertainty when, at age 68, his doctor believed it was a good idea for him to take a PSA test. Now, I had never even heard of a PSA test, but he said it's something to determine whether you have any prostate problems. And so I took a PSA test and found that it was elevated up to 10.5. After he got the results back, he decided that I should see a urologist. And he said, now we need to take a biopsy of your prostate to make sure what, whether it has any cancer cells or not. So he took 12 samples of a prostate and uh, 10 out of the 12 had cancer cells in them. And he said, that's pretty bad. He said, uh, we need to do something about that. Stephen's doctor recommended radiation, 37 treatments at Wellspan Health's Cherry Tree Cancer Center. When you hear the word cancer, it's, it's kind of a dreadful thing. But you place yourself into the hands of these professionals. And uh, believe me, they know what they're doing. They're, they're just wonderful people. Just need you to step here on the scale for me. People react very differently, but almost universally they're scared. They're scared because the, the word cancer just brings out fear, the unknown. Each person about to undergo radiation therapy most likely has a million questions, and for each one, there's an answer and someone on hand to answer it for you. But the first question asked is perhaps the most important one, and it's not for the doctor. It's how are you doing? We're so focused often on the correct diagnosis and the options of the treatments that um, sometimes that the patient can get lost in that process. So to ask them, how are you, makes a huge difference. We often see a big sigh of relief, and the patients often say, wow, you know, that's the first time anybody's asked me that. And then they often open up, and it gives them that first level of comfort, understanding that we really care about how they're doing, not just about know what we're about to do. And what you're about to do will be explained clearly during your first visit. You come in for a consultation and that's where I go over just general basic information. And I usually ease their mind right away by just telling them that they're just here to talk with the doctor their first day. A lot of patients come in and think they're getting their radiation treatment that day and they know nothing about radiation. The first thing I do is to um, I introduce myself and let them know the purpose of the consultation, the reason that they're here. So we try to individualize into what a patient really needs in order for them to, to really do a couple things. Number one is understand what they have. Number two is to know what the options are. And then number three, if, we, if we're going to treat them, to understand what they're going to go through. This is the CAT scan unit. This is where we're going to do your, your planning. The CT person is the first um, level of interaction that the patient has with our whole department for the most part after their consultation. So we can set the tone um, for their whole entire um, stay here with us. And it's very important to ease their minds. Okay. Just want to have a seat right there for me. First of all, nothing we're going to do to them is going to hurt. It is um, like I said, most of our patients have had CAT scans before. Um, it's a CAT scan in every sense of the word, um, in every aspect that they've had before, except for we're going to use that CAT scan specifically for the planning of their treatments. And when planning those treatments, there is no guesswork. How the person is positioned during the simulation process is the key. They're explained the importance of, once we get them all set up, the importance of just holding still. And that is our um, 
goal both in the simulation process and throughout treatment um, is their ability to hold still and for us to reproduce the position that they were simulated in. For a prostate patient, we would use what's called a vac lock, which I describe it to the patients as a, as a, as a bean bag. And what we do is we mold that around their legs, um, from new, usually from the knee down. Um, we mold it around them, make sure they're comfortable, um, and then we vacuum the air out of it. We have a styrofoam block that we bring their feet together and strap the, the feet to the block. Um, that is to help them hold still and to help, again, in our reproducibility that everything step by step is the exact same. Once set, the person is placed into the bore, which is the actual hole of the CT unit. It's a very wide opening. Most of our patients are not completely in the hole. Heads out either, most of the time on either side of the CT unit itself. So that eases their mind. They're not confined underneath the bore itself. While inside the CT, there's work going on behind the scenes on computers where calculations are made. The centering where we want to um, center our treatments is decided on those computers. And that's where we call, we call the doctor in. Everything that the doctor needs to make that informed, very important decision is right there in front of him to, to choose where he needs to center. Once that's done, there's just one more step, a very important one. We're gonna put marks on them when we're done. And that just entails a, a Sharpie marker and a few blue crosses. In most cases, patients will receive a small tattoo to mark the treatment area put a sterile dab of sterile ink to the patient's skin and then just take the very tip of the needle just to get underneath the skin just to leave a little dot and that's all there is to it. All told the simulation process can last anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. I would say the most again important thing for the patient to know is this initial process um, is isn't as overwhelming or intense as they may feel it's going to be. It's dealt with so differently for each patient, and we are there for them. That's our job, to make them as comfortable as we possibly can to get them through this next process. Ninety-five percent of the people coming through the door will never see the dosimetrist. But what they do in dosimetry is no less important than any other job here. A dosimetrist is the person that will plan and calculate the radiation dose. Once simulation is complete and a plan for treatment is designed, it comes here. We'll actually map out with the physician the area it needs to be treated, uh, the organs in that, that don't need to be treated, and plan how best to deliver the radiation without, you know, giving, you know, unnecessary dose to healthy structures. And as in every step of treatment, precision is vital. Everything's very detailed. Uh, we don't guess. And the plan, with all of its precise calculations, will be put into action and treatment will begin. We have better tools technology-wise to treat than we have ever had before. We have ways of finding cancer, targeting cancer, localizing and treating it with higher doses and lower side effects than ever before. This is one of those tools, the Linear Accelerator. The Linear Accelerator is the treatment machine that is used to deliver the radiation. It's basically a glorified um, x-ray machine runs on a higher energy, but same concept as an x-ray machine. For any patient undergoing radiation therapy for the first time, the whole process can be a bit intimidating. Treatment room is very overwhelming. The machine itself is very large. Try to explain what's going to happen as much as you can. Try to talk to them so they at least build a rapport with you. During simulation and treatment, the patient's gown or clothing will be moved away from the treatment site. This allows us to precisely aim the radiation beam. And they'll see lasers coming out of the wall. So they'll feel us pushing them and pulling them and rotating them and 
trying to get them back in the same position they were in from CAT scan. We'll be outside the room, they'll be alone in the room, but we do have monitors that we're watching and listening to them, so they're alone essentially, but not really. There's x-rays that we take to make sure their position is correct. Okay, the x-rays look good. We're gonna begin your treatment now. The machine's just gonna rotate around you. The treatment will only affect the area that we're treating. So if you're treating someone's prostate, they won't have any symptoms that they're losing their hair on their head. They won't be nauseous. The complexity of the, the treatments now is uh, very sophisticated and very significant. We have a lot of redundant systems to uh, ensure the quality um, of the radiation therapy. We not only have the techs and the therapists checking it, we have redundancies within the machine. We, we take every um, feasible step to try to reduce the risk and minimize any potential problems. Although many patients have minimal side effects, staff will provide you information related to risks from radiation therapy. You will be carefully monitored and treated for any side effects that may develop during therapy. Back in the early 40s and 50s, radiation started out as being uh, basically delivered by diagnostic type machines. You know, it was basically a chest x-ray machine. They turned up real high. And that resulted in a lot of skin burns. And we really don't see that now. If we are not trying to treat the skin, then the radiation um, is almost invisible to the individual. The total time from arrival until the completion of each individual treatment is about 15 minutes. As you get your treatments, there's never any uncomfortable feeling that, with it. Uh, they just make you feel very comfortable. They have the latest technology, they have the latest equipment, uh, the, latest, the latest radiation equipment, and they are very caring persons. Once I think the first initial week is in, it's kind of, they look at it like, oh, not too bad, I can do this. Okay, you're all set for today. Have Thank a wonderful you. day. Each patient undergoing treatment will be evaluated by their doctor on a weekly basis. More evidence that they're not alone in this major commitment to recovery. One of the concerns people have, once they understand it's an important part of the treatment, is how am I going to do it? Because a lot of people are working now. Typically the treatments are only about 10 or 15 minutes, so it is a commitment every day, but the treatments are usually given at the same time every day and people work it in. Coming to radiation Monday through Friday, I tell them it's like a full-time job. You come in at, every day at that specific time that you're given and, you know, once they see the light at the end of the tunnel, as in their last day of treatment, they're a whole new person. Stephen Fodor knows the feeling. His latest PSA test results are a big reason for that. We went from 10.5 down to 0 .019, which is at the present. And uh, everyone is very happy with the results, especially me. Compassion and understanding there uh, become our focus. Sure, I can check your appointment. From the, from the secretaries and front office people that take the information, that gather the, the data through the physicians, through the individuals, that uh, the therapists that do the planning, the dosimetrists that do the calculations, the physicists that check the calculations, the nurses that support the people, and eventually the therapists that treat the people. Everybody is highly trained. Everybody is on the same page in terms of understanding our basic goal, and it's very patient-focused. That means support for patients beyond the support they're already receiving while they're undergoing their treatments. Our social worker department can help them if they're, with their bills if they need to, if they're just having trouble coping with everything. They're a wonderful group of people that just can help them deal with what's going on. Whatever they need, financially, uh, physically, mentally, we're always here to help them. You're not a number, you're a person. A person that has a need, you just have a f altogether different feeling whenever you, you get treated so wonderful like they have treated me here. It goes back to that team concept, the concept that everybody, patient, therapist, doctor, are all in this together. I understand that this is, you know, very hard. It's not the easiest thing to go through, but we're going to get you through it as best we can. We're here for you.